Save mental energy managing your WordPress site with easy-to-use DIY features from WP Engine's managed WordPress hosting. Visit wpengine.com forward slash love your work for up to four months free. This is Love Your Work. Wherever you are in your journey towards entrepreneurial enlightenment, we have the people and the tools to help you carve out your own version of success. I'm David Cadavy, and I'm a best-selling author and entrepreneur. I have built a business and life according to my own values, and I want to help you do the same. So every Thursday, I love bringing you a new episode in which I dissect the unique path of a guest. How do they turn struggles into opportunities? How do they cut out the noise to focus? And where were the clues that led them to their calling? Or I bring you lessons from my own journey. If this is your first time listening, be sure to check out some of our most popular episodes, Jason Fried on episode one, Ryan Holiday on episode 31, and Elise Bauer on episode 33. And if this is your first time listening, I promise my audio is usually a lot, <laughs> a lot better than this. I'm back in my apartment in Chicago, and I'm selling or giving away everything. Uh, so besides uh, all the noise outside my windows, there's significantly less fabric and other dampening material in my apartment. Uh, I do still have my couch, but hopefully by the time you hear this, I'll no longer have a couch. And by next week, my home base will be Colombia. Yes, the country. And it's an exciting move. And you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was listening to Tim Ferriss's podcast, and uh, Malcolm Gladwell was the guest. He said something that really resonated with me. I'll just go ahead and play it for you here. Advice you would give your 30-year-old self? I would have left North America. Leave North America. To get out of there. Get out? Why? Because you'll wake up when you're 50 and realize that you spent your entire working career in North America, which is, despite the fact that it pretends to be the only place that matters, is not the only place that matters. I had already about 75% made the decision to move at that point, but hearing that from Malcolm Gladwell really, I, I think, helped push my decision that last 25%. The way I see it, we, we all have this great technology, and I, I can conduct interviews for the show for example, over Skype, I can keep in touch with friends and family, with video chats. I can learn Spanish much easier with uh, things like Google Translate. And actually, in fact, my first date with my girlfriend was a heavily Google Translate-assisted date. So we have all this great technology. So we have the opportunity to immerse ourselves in other cultures. And, and some people probably think that you know this being easier is kind of besides the point that living in another culture is supposed to be hard. And yeah, I, I get that. That makes some sense. But consider that growing up in a suburban environment, I would get anxious over like leaving the house to go to a movie. And now I'm moving to another continent and I feel really good about it. And that's in large part thanks to the internet. So it's thanks to Steve Case, who I talked about in episode 25, who really got me connected for the first time. And it's thanks to so many other great innovators that came before him and after him. And I, I just think that there's something there. So whenever I hear people like Elon Musk fantasizing about going to Mars, this is what I start to think about. Like, by all means, go ahead, colonize Mars. But don't forget how much of Earth there is left for you to explore. Don't forget how much of human experience there is left for you to explore. Don't forget how many of those things are now so much closer to your reach than they were before. Now, I know I sound a little sanctimonious to, to some of you. It's, it's kind of hard to talk about adventure or travel much without sounding that way, which is something Jody Ettenberg and I talked about on episode 23. I get it. It's much, much harder for some people to do than other people. And I've got many privileges and lucky breaks that made this a relatively easy thing for me to do. It's just that this is what I chose to do instead of working at a startup in Silicon Valley and paying $3,000 or $3, a month for a studio apartment. It's, it's just something to consider. If you are in a position to get out of the bubble that is North America, and I would extend that bubble to much of the first world or, or the developed world, I think it's something really worth considering, and I think you'll be better for it. I would have been so much more interesting and thoughtful and insightful and whatever if I had experience, particularly in the developing world. But all that's not really what this episode's about. This episode features an article that I published on Medium 
called Build the Habit First. And uh, a reader emailed me about this article, and James is his name. He had a great story that I wanted to share. Here's what James says. I had tried and failed many times to kick a powerful 20-year nicotine addiction. One day at work, feeling the usual urge to light up, I tried a new mind game. I'm really not quitting smoking, I told myself. I'm giving up just one insignificant cigarette. It's the next one. So hard as it was at first, for the next 40 years, I avoided that one cigarette. On that front, at least, I somehow had grasped the value of starting small, and a life-saving habit was born. So I hope that this article helps you start small. Here it goes. Want to maximize your email marketing? You should try Active Campaign. I switched last year from MailChimp, and I love it. With email marketing, marketing automation, and a sales CRM, it's a powerful, intuitive, and complete platform. Claim your 14-day free trial of Active Campaign at activecampaign.com slash loveyourwork. Build the habit first. We all have habits that we'd like to build. We want to go to the gym three times a week. We want to meditate 20 minutes a day. Or we want to write 1,000 words a day. As is usually the case, we dream a little too big. The vision of that dream gets in the way of making it a reality. These sound like modest goals, but they're actually big and scary. They're just big enough that excuses are easy to make. We're kind of tired, so we'll go to the gym tomorrow. We don't have time to meditate this morning. The Pressfieldian resistance is too much, and the excuses we make protect us from feeling bad about not building the habit. So, the habit never gets built. The problem is that Building the habit itself is an accomplishment. Writing 1,000 words for one day in itself is another accomplishment. Your brain can only handle so many accomplishments at once. When you start bunching them together, it makes it easy for your ego to hide, like a wounded monkey in a tree, far from the tiger's reach. The solution is to build the habit first. You have to set a ridiculously modest goal and make a modest agreement with yourself. Write 100 words a day for one week at this time and place each day. Go to the gym three times in one week on these dates and times for 15 minutes each session. Meditate for two minutes a day for one week at this time and place each day. This works because you'll feel ridiculous if you make an excuse that you can't write 100 words. Your ego isn't that good at hiding. It'll be like a grizzly bear behind a bamboo stalk. But something happens as you start to build your ridiculously easy habit. You start to feel good about it. When you feel good about it, you start to enjoy it. When you enjoy it, it's easy to do. Once you've finished a week, you may decide to do a month. Keep your ridiculously modest goal. Don't raise your goal until the habit has been built. Notice these important elements of building the habit. The habit is ridiculously easy. You've only agreed to a week at first, because that's ridiculously easy, and you'll do a month if that works out. You have no way of knowing if the habit will serve you beyond that. You've pre-established a time and place to perform your habit. This makes it harder for your habit to slip away. Whenever possible, make the habit every day. If it's every day, it's harder to put off. When I wrote my latest book proposal, I committed to one hour a day. When I get back into meditating, I make it five minutes a day. I recently published a 500-word Medium article every weekday morning for two months. Don't let your dream of the ideal habit hold you back from having a habit. With a little motivational judo, you can hold the resistance at bay. Let your ego pass by safely and build the habits of your dreams. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by Audible, and they'd like to give you a free audiobook. Choose from over 180,000 audiobooks on any subject you can imagine. Just go to cadavy.net slash audible to claim your free audiobook. So there we have
have it. I talk about the resistance quite a bit. That is uh, a reference to the War of Art, <laughs> the War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Great book for anybody who aspires to create things and and struggles to do so. Uh, you can get that at cadby.net slash war of art. And before I go, I've got to ask, do you like books? If you do, sign up for my book recommendations. About 90% will be nonfiction on subjects spanning from biographies to neuroscience. Just go to cadby.net slash reading and get the first set of recommendations right away. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Cadby. The theme music for this show is CNU, performed by the Album Leaf, courtesy of Sub Pop Records. Love Your Work is a production of Academy Inc.